Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 82, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowth, and as usual, I'm joined by my two good friends and co-host, Raffle and Corbett. How are you guys doing tonight? You know, I'm doing all right. I had a... I didn't have the best uh, release day for the, the mini set, but uh, the rest of the week things turned around uh, quite a bit. So, um, you know, actually ended up making it to Legend on the back of a 9-0 run with uh even paladin of all decks and uh you know had some uh had some fun in dumpster legend once i got there yeah i um i actually had the same kind of thing where on the release day i didn't have a great time in hindsight it made me realize how much of my happiness is entirely based on how much sleep i got and how much i've eaten and how much water i've drank and that's pretty much it <laughs> so, like, so i didn't sleep very much the night over release day because it comes out very early for me I ended up doing a long stream felt really bad about it at the end and then i reflected and it was great and i've had a really good time since then um the mini set didn't do a ton i think but i mean there's a little bit sprinkled in here and there and we'll dig into all of that today yep we will dig into it in just a second after we take care of our housekeeping stuff so first things first if you guys do enjoy the podcast whether you guys are watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anything like that. If you guys enjoy the content, leave a like, comment, subscribe. It's a small thing, but it does actually support us a ton. Yeah, you can also support the podcast by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash stateofwild and pick up some sweet perks. And of course, you can always come join the rest of the community at the State of Wild Discord server to talk all things Wild Hearthstone. All right, let's hop into it. Uh, Anixia's Lair, the brand new mini set, came out on Tuesday. Uh, 35 brand new cards and so what we're going to be talking about in this week's episode pretty simple we're going to be talking about the cards and decks that are seeing play or have been impacted by the mini set um and i think we have to talk about the big one right uh questline hunter getting a huge makeover this uh this mini set with two new inclusions so hunter only getting three cards but two of them seeing significant play here uh so we have furious howl which is the two mana card draw spell for hunter uh turns out two mana draw three is pretty good uh who could have seen that one coming uh but also dragon bane shot uh corb you we'll, we'll let you start by taking your victory lap here uh you were right last week dragon bane shot pretty good card yeah i uh i had memories where i, I was thinking I, to I thought i talked about it potentially being tier one but i went and checked at the edited show and i think that might have gotten uh taken out or maybe i said it on stream i can't remember but i was very high on the idea of uh quest Questline Hunter heading into this mini set. I really liked both Howl and Dragon Mage Shot. And dude, I've been playing a lot of it, and it's really, really good. I saw uh, Meowth, you were playing a lot of it, and then Ruffle, you were talking before the show that you'd, uh, you'd been trying as well. Uh, it's busted. Like, I think it's really good, <laughs> like, potentially tier one. So, yeah. New, new quote-unquote, new deck, quotation marks. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the cards seem pretty good to me like especially Fury Howl I think everybody was like looking at this one as the the hunter card to watch but by the end of it uh, you really had me sold on Dragon Bane shot last week and um I got to say you were 100% right about the one mana spells that you have and even the rush minions from like um uh, the uh, the pings are really helpful in setting up your um your dragon bane shot so it just is almost like an infinite rapid fire until you don't need it to be when you have the ferocious or the furious i'm gonna say that wrong for the rest of my life um, Me too. but like it, it it just until you don't need it anymore and then you just dump hand and go off it like even a card like quick shot you don't even really care about the card draw aspect of it because you just have the backup plan of furious Howl, and it's just like well this is sweet I will. I like. I'm fully prepared to be canceled for this, but like, yeah. I, I questline hunt. This version of questline hunter is a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot more active <laughs> and less just like. Mostly because I think it's carrying fewer bad cards. I think it's a lot more fun to play than the the odd version because like drawing cards and pressing hero powers is fun. That's why people like draws a priest. Now it happens probably a little bit too quickly and maybe has a little bit too much draw associated with it. But like, this is what. I think we, I'm, I'm speaking for you guys now, but I think this is what we are looking for in like the buzzard um, mm -hmm. version of the Questline Hunter when we had that Hopium or maybe Copium that that was going to be the uh, the good version upon release. And like, this is this is the deck. It runs Dragonbane. Um, 
runs a super low curve, at least the version that I've been playing. Um, and like, I don't know, I've, I'm kind of of the mind that like kill command bad card in the deck. Like, why would I pay three mana for that when uh, I get like, I don't know that you want a damage spell that does or that costs more than uh, two that isn't aim shot right now just because like pairing with dragon bane and the the furious hell and um i don't know like I, I i was playing it off stream before recording just now because i'm having fun with it and that's it's been a while since i felt that way about like a potentially high tier meta deck i mean when rolf was having fun with a meta deck you know it's you know it's fun right um I, i'm not completely sold on the kill commands being bad i think there's like 28 really really solid cards uh, in the deck, and I think there's like two that can like flex depending on what you're playing against. Um, I know I, when the list initially came out, I was running kill commands in those last two slots, and they were fine. Um, I know Corb's list that I was playing a little bit today was running Barrack and uh, Rinley's Rifle in there in those slots, and I know some lists are running just Bullet Shot uh, or Grievous was it Grievous Bite. Um, mm -hmm. in place of those to help against stuff like Agar Priest and Pirate Warrior. But I don't know, the deck is super sweet. Um, I, I agree that it's like a it's a good deck. It's a really good deck. I think it's much more fair as well um, than the the odd version of the deck. At least it gives off the impression that it's a lot more fair because um, I don't know. It, it's slower, right? I, which is I think is the big thing because the the nerf to rapid fire did actually matter um, when you when you compare it. But the matchup spreads actually shifted a little bit, which I think is the most interesting thing. Prior to Odd Hunter being nerfed, everybody was looking at Druid as like the the counter to odd hunter you would bring it and it was like an 80 90 matchup in a hunter with this version of the deck and how much draw it has and kind of refill with stuff like furious howls uh dragon bane shots basically rapid fire 2.0 in a lot of scenarios which is great for the deck um the deck just it's good uh, it's really good uh in the current metagame as well uh, beats up on shamans actually beats up on all the druids uh, which are really popular right now for a reason that we'll talk about in a bit so super sweet deck i don't think it's doing anything like super broken or like out of bounds but i think that's a sign of a really fun balanced strong deck in the format yeah i think i think you're pretty much right on with the uh the 28 good cards um like uh i've been running a couple copies of uh bullet shot in that uh like twenty nine thirty. Just because, like at at the ranks I was playing, it was uh, higher density of pirate warriors and bullet shot does good. I, I, you know, there's a conversation about whether bullet shot is better than grievous bite, but like for my money, uh, five damage greater than four damage, so I tend to lean towards the uh, the bullet shot and like just figure it out from there. But I think like I, I don't I don't think it matters too much. Um, and like I could see that being a pretty dead card though in a you know metagame where you have less on board stuff because there have been situations where it's like well i got this bullet shot in hand but nothing to point it at so um but even then in those situations you know you get the toxic reinforcements down and you know you got six damage burst uh, as well as more hero powers but yeah i think the the druid uh call is a good one just because like it was unwinnable for a while and um at this point the uh you know, you get a dragon bane and enough draw, and it doesn't feel like any amount of armor is insurmountable. I almost like I came very close to beating a, a line cracker druid that like went in halfway on the combo twice. Um, so they had something like 110 armor, and I almost made my way through it. Um, just with uh, like if I had drawn the dragon bane sooner, it might have been a different game. Yeah, I had the same situation in a game I played off stream and I was really bummed about it. I, I tweeted about it. They got up to 163 armor and it ended up winning with one health left in uh, deep fatigue. So that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, like it's overall just like much more well-rounded, I think. Like it definitely does have a better druid matchup. Like you guys are spot on. I don't know if it's like favored over druid, um, but you know, it's, it's much closer, right, than what it, what it previously was, especially against the Cthune Druid, which is, like, the slowest version. I feel like against that deck, you probably are favored, almost. Whereas Lion Cracker, because they do pop off a little bit quicker, you don't have time to, like, save up for that 70 Dragon Bane damaged, <laughs> or whatever insane thing you're doing. Um, but yeah, uh, as for, like, you know, the, the fairness of the deck, I, I do think... I do think a lot of the same complaints that we saw about Old Hunter are going to pop up a little bit. There's going to be a lot less 
kills without even doing the quest though which is the big thing like there are a lot of games with old hunter where you'd play toxic reinforcement on one you'd start hero powering and you didn't even need the quest reward a lot of the time uh to just like sneak wins in there um just with the power of just that three damage hero power and that's not really possible with this deck like you do need to be able to get the uh you know get the tabish down so it's a little bit slower but i mean it's a novelty right now. I'm sure people will go back to kind of not liking this deck very much very soon, but I really like playing it. I've had a great time with it over the past few days. Yeah. No, I agree that, like, it doesn't... It doesn't just do regular old face, like, hunter, odd hunter things, but, like, it does... Even though it's doing less damage per hero power, it's it's it feels like it has more, like, burst damage from hand in the immediate post-Tavish turns, because... Like, you just, you have so much extra gas, whether it's from being able to hold on to those additional Dragonbane shots to give you, like, damage, um, you know, after after the Tavish comes down or continue giving you cards in hand. Like, just the extra gas that it has allows it to feel like the, the OTK potential is maybe um, a little bit higher than it was. Like, I, I got renoed uh, the turn that Tavish came down, and I, was, I just kind of shrugged it off and then killed him the next turn. Like, it was... <laughs> like, I dealt with the Reno, and, and I'm just like, sure, I, I gave up a little bit of damage. And even then, like, I dealt with the Reno, and then they were sub-20, and then I just killed them the next turn without, like, a, a Dragon's Bane being involved. So, like, yeah, the, the amount of gas that the deck has now is just kind of silly. Yeah. I... I don't think I'm super worried about people complaining about the deck because people will do that about any good deck. <laughs> so not super worried about that, but I, I don't think it's doing anything like more insane than the current top tier decks, right? Like when you look at even Hunter or not even Hunter, sorry, even Warlock, Pirate Warrior, uh, the the combo Warlock decks, it's not doing anything more unfair than that. So I'm not. This is this is me. Also, as someone who is enjoying the novelty of the new Questline, Questline Hunter deck, um, and I think Raffle was like super spot on that this is like what we originally envisioned when we talked about Questline Hunter with like mm -hmm. Buzzard and the and the draw engine. So at least for the three of us, it's been super sweet, and uh, hopefully, so I will go ahead and say, but in here, we're talking about all these decks. We'll be posting like codes down in the description uh, if you guys want to net deck any of the decks that we talk about today. Go play this deck. Go find out what's good in the deck uh, for those 29th and 30th card slots and have fun with it, man, before people start bringing back out their Mind Breakers and Finley Wizards and everything like that. But in enjoy it. Enjoy Questline Hunter as it was meant to be played. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about uh, Kazakasan, the uh, the big dragon, the 8-mana 8-8. Eight eight. Replace your deck with treasures from duels. Um, so this card, a lot of conversation generated about it in Standard. Uh, about power level and everything like that, but I want to talk about it in Wild. Uh, it's been seeing a lot of play in slower Druid decks. So I think initially it was seeing play as kind of like a complementary win con to something like Cthune in that really slow Cthune Druid. I just It's Control Druid, right, with two win cons now, with Kazakus and Cthune. Uh, and then some people, I know Corby were messing around with some builds, and I know Otters has been messing around with just like a Dragon Druid. Right, with stuff like the new Anixia, um, some Yaceras. I know some people are messing around with Malagos and Swipes, right? So people are messing around with some some builds of just slow control druid decks that all are running new Kazakasan. So first of all, impressions about Kazakasan and like how sick that card is, because I'm really enjoying it and I really hope they don't nerf it because of standard. But also just kind of what are you guys feeling about this control druid deck? Uh post inclusion of Kazakhstan. Um, I think the biggest thing that I underestimated is I like I looked at Kazakhstan and I'm like, hey, that's that's better Elysiana, right? And so early on when I was playing Kazakhstan, I was like, well let's just get a bunch of value out of this and, and do that. But like I underestimated like the pressure that it applies. Like Locus is nuts, Book is nuts, the Ragnarok shots are nuts. And those things are extra nuts when you're above 10 mana and can draw a bunch of cards in Druid. Not only do you get to the Gazakazan faster in Druid, but, like, you can do a lot more with the uh, w w with the expensive um, treasures once you get Guff online. So I think Druid is definitely the, the place where it's seen the most play for a reason. Um, but I don't necessarily think that, like, in our format, when, like, games end so quickly that like it's doing that much more broken like like you i i'm 
I'm hoping that like once again Wild doesn't suffer for the sins of standard because like I I don't I don't think it's that busted in our format. Like you play an eight mana card and then you have to wait a couple turns until the opponent's hero explodes. Is that busted? Like it it's yeah, it's a lot faster than Cthulhu and you probably move away from running Cthulhu as a win condition in that style of deck. Um, you know, there's an argument to be made for continuing a line cracker Mechathune thing, but like that's a that's a very different win condition. Like is it, I don't see it as much more busted. I haven't played it, so um maybe that's maybe I am, am missing something, but it just it, it it seems like just another win condition for Druid and maybe marginally better than uh some of the ones that we've been playing with for a while. Yeah, it's um I think it's totally fine. Like, totally fine in Wild uh, What for what it is. You know, like the 8 mana 8-8, eight, eight, the sick duels. Like, this is a great win condition for the Wild format. It'll probably get nerfed. <laughs> like, let's be, let's be real. Like, there's, there's enough of the stuff going on in Standard, and I've kind of been keeping an eye on how Standard Druid has been looking. And um, if you really like Kazakhstan, you better get your games in quick. Um, as Meowth was saying, though, there, there are, like, a lot of different kind of approaches and shells that people are trying. Like, I even tried something, like, just a token Druid build, Meowth. Uh, Glowfly and Whispering Woods, and kind of running this as sort of a win, like, a, a late game to beat out things like... I don't know, like, even Warlock or, you know, the type of, like, Reno Warlock matchups, you know, the, the things that used to clear all your tokens every turn and make you cry, but now you can, bam, just hit him with the Kazakasan. Um, so I do think there's a lot. Druid, obviously, the best home for it. Um, but yeah, like, in other classes, probably not as useful. Like, I did kind of toy around with the idea of playing it in, like, Priest, but that re- really seems tough, right? Like, running the, uh... Running something that's slow in Priest and not being able to use like things like Solar Eclipse and, you know, the guff extra mana that you can really take advantage of. So, I really like it. Um, funnily enough, the thought popped into my head, what if Kazakasan was like a questline reward? I wonder if people would feel differently about it like that. Because there shouldn't be that much reason to. But it does kind of feel like a, a similar payoff as kind of what we see with some of the questline reward stuff right now. Yeah, and I think that, like, especially in our format where the quest lines get completed so much, that's, like, that's why it's not too problematic. Like, we already have, no, even beyond quest lines, we already have game-ending cards. Like, there's kind of an understanding in our format that if you're playing a card that costs, like, 8 to 10 mana, you need to win as a result of it. And that's 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 what Kazakhstan does, and it's not even the turn that it comes out, you know? And there there's some variance associated with it, so, like... You, you can get some, it's rare, but you can get some dumpster tier um, treasures and just like that, you know, not necessarily close out the game as quickly or you still have to like, again, I think the big thing is you have to take the turns after you play the card to draw the treasures and there are very few treasures that immediately just end the game. Um, it feels bad when you run into one, uh, but like there aren't, I don't, there aren't that many unless you're like, you know, making a push for, uh, lethal and you get booked like the book is the I think the closest one because I just like that does so that has so many words on it that <laughs> that it feels it feels kind of uh, silly at times but like aside from that like even Locus takes a couple turns of uh, of the opponent like not doing anything essentially too so yeah I think that the, the flexibility of the card though is maybe what makes it a little bit concerning because you can um just kind of uh i don't know especially in standard where um things are a little bit slow you can just kind of drop it in and i think that um i i'm not even sure how they would change it other than like adjusting the requirement right because like i think the problem that people have with it is that you aren't really making much of a sacrifice in terms of your deck building to get there and so you can just kind of drop it on curve and uh win the next few turns but I don't know how you fix that problem other than like changing the uh, the pool of cards, right? Because you can't you can't nerf the the rewards because those are duels rewards and those are balanced for duels or rather maybe not balanced for duels. Um, but like um, you, um, like how do you change the card? Re- increase its mana cost maybe makes a difference, but not all that much for Druid. And so like I I don't know. I think I I'm not as uh, convinced that the card gets uh, nerfed. Um, I think a lot of people are going to want it to happen. I think maybe the risk is when a rotation happens, it becomes a little like it becomes the one of the lone win conditions. But at the same time, it's in the same uh, rotation set as questline, so like it won't be. 
Yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm like, I, I'm sure like a mana nerf would make a, a big difference, but, um, you know, they might go after a different card. You know, this <laughs> Guff um, is kind of uh, doing a lot of damage right now in, in that format. And, you know, because uh, Lakasan is best in Druid, and the entire Druid class does rotate. Um, with next rotation it's like losing 25 of these 30 cards that it's playing right now so maybe they kind of want to be a little bit gentle especially when we are so close like it, the mini set only just released we are only like really just a month and a half out until we start looking at like brand new stuff pretty soon so um we'll see but yeah you're totally right like sh whether it's shadow walk or this or whatever like we expect these cards to be really good and this card is really good and i'm glad people are looking at it in druid and it's a, it's a fun new take on the shell as long as you don't get dirty ratted and uh, it's kind of why I liked building the deck with a few more minions, you know, things like the Anixia and um, even like Ysera, the Unleashed, mm -hmm. to activate like Breath of Dreams, things like that. Because, man, I tried to build, play this deck with like a code that someone gave me and I just got dirty routed every time and I had nothing left in my deck and it was just like, it was absolute hell. So, yeah, that, that was the problem. But I think, I think the deck does have like serious potential to be very competitive um, using that Druid Shell. Yeah, I mean, I just want to put my two cents in here like i don't think that kazakasan is the reason that the deck is doing so well it's it's guff 100 percent, right it, it's not like kazakasan is sweet guff is the reason that that deck is so strong and standard and so i'm really hoping they don't touch kazakasan in in wild um but that dirty rat reason is why i'm like personally I, i've played a ton of different types of these druid shells I'm still like 100% certain that the the version that's running Cthune as like your backup win con that can't get ratted like has to be the way to go cuz this is my personal like two cents but there's a lot of rats <laughs> there's a lot of rats and then when you have only like the two or three ways to win the game and they get ratted like what, what do you I'm going to go ahead and say do do? people <laughs> I People are running too many rats. I, I don't think we're in a rat meta game. Like, what are you ratting other than Shaman? You're ratting Kazakasans. Like, duh. Well, okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> okay, maybe. But, like, is Kazakasan really that prevalent? Like, I, I think people have been running way too many rats for a while right now. And, um, like, I don't think that there's a, a reason to. Um, but I also, like, doesn't. Isn't there some kind of strong anti synergy between Kazakasan and Cthune? Like, how, how can you play the. Cthulhu or the Kazakasan early, like that. Or, well, I mean, or, if you play the Kazakasan the... early, then you don't need the Cthulhu, right? You don't you don't care about that because then your treasures carry you. Then, then just play Cthulhu. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I generally am of the mind that like it's better to do one thing well than uh, two things okay. When you're so when your one thing is so easily disrupted, though, I feel like having this backup win con that gets disrupted on a completely different axis. It is the way to go. That is my two cents. This is from me like, yeah. playing, like, obviously just, like, a couple days uh, of these Druid decks, so I might be totally wrong, but... I, I could be off, too, because I haven't played the deck. I haven't felt the pain of getting Dirty Ratted. Uh, oh, it, it sucks, hopes. by the way. Just a heads I, up. I can't oh, hope so bad. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll prepare for that, because I, I'm going to try it next week. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the question becomes, I, I've been seeing some people actually cutting the Oaken Summons package simply because you want to get the uh, the Gazakus down consistently early. Is there any world where that's worth? That seems like any time um, uh, people start cutting Oaken Summons, I start, like, you know, <laughs> getting a little bit concerned. I have very strong feelings on this. I feel like cutting your four mana win the game card combo is, like, never correct. Like, I, it can't be... It can't be worth it, yeah, right? I I, I cut it in the token version because I was running, like, double fungal and stuff. And, you know, minions are a little bit worse than that. But, yeah, if you're running, like, this, the stock, you know, like, slow control druid, I, I'd rather not cut it. Especially because you do have the Oaken Summons. Like, the Oaken Summons is Vargoth, and if you are just running, like, one injured, then there's no minions left anyway that aren't dragons. Like, with with Oaken Summons, you're so likely to be able to fish those out anyway. Um, but yeah, like, I, I really do like the idea of running more and more dragons as sort of the rat protection, because I do agree with Ruffle that the Cthune, it, it just seems very, like, clashing. The, the idea of, like, running those bad five mana spells for a win condition that you're not even really gearing up to use that often. Um, and so I think just running, like, some more dragons and Breath of Dreams is probably the better, the better move. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's really cool. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be playing a lot more of this deck, and, um... You know, traditionally, these slower Druid decks aren't something that interests me a ton. So, 
I mean, it does speak to this to how fun a lot of these new dragon cards are. Yeah. I, I think there's plenty of room for experimentation. I think that's the conclusion we're coming to here with this little conversation we're having. There's there's not an established best build, right? There's I I, I know Otter says a build that's a little bit different than Corbs, which is completely different than mine. Uh, which may be completely different than Martians, which may be completely different than the list you're running. So experiment, figure out what what works well for you, play it, have fun before it gets nerfed. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> um, uh, I guess we should touch on Anixia a little bit. I know, Corey, you've been playing it probably. I, I haven't messed around with Anixia um, in any deck, really. Um, I don't know if you've messed around with it. If so, how's it, how's it going? Yeah, it, like it's really strong. Um, like it, it's a very cool card as well. So I don't know. It's it's not too flashy um, what Anixia does, but you know it, it's such a high impact um, as a high cost card, and it is like the second best dragon I think that you have if you are looking at that Breath of Dreams and trying to justify it. Um, we did actually get good dragons. <laughs> like it, it's not just Kazakasan. So it is nice because we have been angling to use you know two mana wild growth draw a card for a really long time personally so yeah i've been pretty impressed with nixia just super high board impact yeah i've i haven't played her yet except for when i stole it from an opponent uh while playing priest but like every time it's come down i was surprised at just how impactful it is just because it is yeah it's a 10 mana card which is like kind of slow in in wild but like the the rush makes a difference and like the difficult like you kind of have to jump through, through hoops to to remove it at times mm -hmm. if you don't have like if you're not playing druid and you don't have a poison seeds or something along those lines like um you know the the first time that i saw it come down i was like well boy it's good that i stole my own onyxia otherwise i would be dead to this <laughs> onyxia <laughs> so like it's uh it, it is a lot higher impact than maybe i assumed it was for the format even and you know that's especially true again in druid where like mana is kind of an afterthought uh, especially with guff so yeah I, I i'm that's the version that i'm leaning towards is uh, kind of including some of those dragons because again like you said two mana wild growth that draws a card is uh pretty ridiculous all right last last comment here about kazakasan what about that miracle priest list with nazmani blood weavers and then you run something like gadgets in so that you like make this kazakasan really really cheap and then you immediately get to draw and play the treasures and just win the game on the same turn. Um, I think it's kind of telling that like the standard versions of the deck aren't doing that. So, but <laughs> um, but high rolls and video clips and no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clips are good. Uh, personally, I if I'm going to use a wild like win con in in that deck, I'm going to play Lothab. Because making like big board with the Malagos pop off and then also dropping low thab, uh, that, that seems better than jumping through I, the Kazaka side stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say I would play Yogg, which I have many times. Oh, in, in that works. Those. Like, <laughs> oh. I'm just yeah. trying to innovate, guys. Come on. No, the, there's also like the the potential. Like, if you're going the route of Bloodweaver um, Auctioneer, you can also just like do the thing where you kill them and generally consistently killing them with like uh, your healing spells is um maybe a little bit better and faster because it makes the opponent dead instead of uh alive that's but you're not running kazakasan and that's a lot less fun but i, I guess winning is one though so uh i mean like i i feel like uh maybe you're underestimating a little bit of the uh the hoops that you'd have to jump through to make that like actually function like you would have to miraculously survive a lot of turns while you draw your cards in the right order because you have to hit the blood weavers, then the auctioneer, then the Kazakazan. You have to reduce the Kazakazan. You have to draw the. You have to put enough spells in your deck, then draw them. Have enough spells remaining in your hand in order to uh, fish them out and uh, generate enough cost reduction. Like, I, as somebody who's tried very similar things in the past, like I don't think <laughs> it, it's and quite that, cumbersome. That sounds way more complicated than playing Guff on Curve and then just uh, <laughs> <laughs> having the Kazakazan. All right, fair enough. Yep, but Swag, Mark, Dane, if you guys listen to this. Please, I, I want a YouTube video. I want, I want to watch some of this. All right. So those are kind of the two good decks that have popped out of this mini set, right? We, we've talked about Questline Hunter. We've talked about these control druids. Let's talk about some uh, some not so good decks, and let's talk about first off the deck that everybody on Twitter and Reddit were freaking out about. Yeah. Let's talk about Curse of Agony Warlock, and let's talk about just how bad this deck is. 
<laughs> this deck almost broke me day one. This is the deck that like that broke me day one because I was just I went into it like optimistic. I'm like, okay. It's got like twenty six good warlock cards. It can't be bad, right? <laughs> And so I started with the version that was just doing the Elec shuffling right into uh, Cold Light Oracles. And I realized, well, I have so many combo pieces that I literally cannot play the Oracles after I finally get to shuffle these Agonies into their deck because that kills me in fatigue because my deck is empty at this point. Like, it took that long to get the cost reduction to get the, uh, the cards drawn into hand. And so I can't even play the Cold Light Oracles. I just have to cross my fingers and pray. In other situations, um, you know, I would get the the shuffling in early enough, and then I'd be like, "Sweet, I'll play this cold light oracle." No bomb or no agonies drawn. Like they, it was just like you, your deck is three quarters agonies, and you draw at most like two or three in a row. It's so incredibly inconsistent. It was giving me just like massive, massive flashbacks into um into in, in like bomb warrior nonsense, where oh. they, their deck is just like entirely um bombs and they still can't draw on so i had to take a break because i was like i i was losing my mind i was like am i doing something wrong i i was because like again it's it, it had to be a good deck right it was still just like mostly good warlock cards that and then just a combo like we talked about so it was going to be fine it was going to be worse than the other combos because it's clunkier but like i i just couldn't win a single like barely win games it was incredibly frustrating other times like when I would get the Cold Light Oracles down, they would draw two regular cards and then burn uh, Agonies afterwards because their hand was too full. And I was just like, it, 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 everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So later I came back to it with the Tog version. And I'm like, okay, people are having success with this one. So that's, this must be good, right? Um, and it was a little bit better in that like they actually drew the Agonies once they made them. But like, it is so easy to play around uh, for so many different reasons. And on top of that, it's just like we talked about, worse than Mechathun because you still have to draw your deck, but now you have like five or six combo pieces instead of uh, just the, the the two main ones. And like the the easy way to play around it is you just have nine cards in hand and then they you cannot combo. So anytime you're playing against a druid, you cannot combo. Anytime you're playing against another warlock, you cannot combo. And so like there are so many limitations for this deck that it's like, it's just not good. Never mind the uh, amount of Geist that I ran into because people were prepared for this deck to be good, and Geist just immediately annihilates your deck no matter when it's played against you. And so it's just like, it's it's not good. So I hate this deck. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, yeah, I thought you were going to say, when you compared it, I thought you were going to be referencing the, the Blur Yog because I remember that being the last time that you almost broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like I, I think I streamed um, maybe two to three hours longer than I was planning to because I had to like I still had to edit a video, get things ready for the uh, the next day, just because I I could not get wins with this stupid deck and like some of it was like you know a little bit of tilt by the the end of it I was just like generally getting frustrated, uh, but most of it was just like deck's not good. Yeah, I, uh, I woke up because obviously release time a little different here. I'm usually up after a few hours. And the pretty much the very first reaction my Twitch chat had was telling me like, hey guys, how's the new set going? Oh, uh, the wallet deck almost broke Ruffle. Um, <laughs> like Ruffle went like 3 and 13 or something. Like when I was watching and I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> like poor Ruffle. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was going to be terrible. I gave it two games. I figured that the TOG version had to be garbage and so i didn't bother i'm like if this is good it has to be the alec version i gave it two games um realized that i was running 17 combo pieces and this deleted it after uh after that so yeah yeah Bad i i watched like five hours of raffle play agony warlock and then i watched court play agony warlock and then i didn't even have to try it because i knew the deck was garbage so yeah i, I, I haven't touched I think it, yet. it i think it's pretty telling that like i haven't seen a single opponent playing it since day one i maybe saw one person playing against me day one like the deck never stood a chance um like i think people are just so primed and conditioned to like warlock having something broken in addition to fatigue having such a strong negative feeling 
that they forgot about like how unreliable it was going to be like we should have learned this lesson from bomb warrior already is really what it comes down to and like like corp said the the tog version was never going to be better than just playing mechathune but i didn't realize how frustrating it was just because of the um just because Counter of play. like the yeah the, yeah the you can just prepare for it and say like you know i'm just gonna hold nine cards in hand gg um, man the win rate is so bad on hs replay it did pop up both the uh the tog and the non-tog version it's just well terrific. i mean to be fair i played a lot of games of, of the deck oh, that's, that's <laughs> some <you>. substantial <laughs> portion of that could just be me suffering <laughs> so so yeah you're welcome for the stats that was my that that was my tuesday <laughs> um like another thing that happened just like icing on the cake was i had like two or th three games in a row where uh both rods were like bottom five cards i had one legitimate game where like both i had two rods bottom three in my deck when i was trying to combo and i was just like i was losing my mind i couldn't get any cost reduction on a deck that needs cost reduction desperately because i was playing the tog version at the time like <laughs> it was it was a nightmare so i'm I'm glad to never have to play that deck again. So the lesson learned here is to never listen to Twitch chat and Reddit and Twitter when they when they talk about and overreact to cards, right? Well, I think realistically, you should probably just listen to no one. Ever, it's not unique to Reddit, Twitch. It, like we get it wrong too, uh, as people are very yeah, quick to to, to, to to remind us. Um, so, like, just just wait. Just wait and see what the cards do and how they play before you start throwing a fit. Like that's that's the best thing that people can learn from this. But of course, like nobody's going to pay attention to this. They're, it's going to be the same thing next expansion, next well, uh, next core set. Even like once that is revealed, people are going to start. You know, you did start this whole conversation with saying don't listen to us, and then tried to give a really really poignant point. So of course, people are going to listen. Well, I was specifically saying don't listen to us when it comes about comes to card predictions. This is why, other than on the podcast, I don't do card reviews because they're they're like, yeah, I get some views, but it's like it, nobody nobody knows what they're talking about. Like everybody has a mass like has about the same success rate, which is you know, flip a coin. I don't know, like yeah, you can get or not. Duh. You you yeah, exactly. You can usually tell what cards are going to be bad, right? Because like the in any card game there are going to be some pack fillers not every card is going to be um you know a playable card that's but that's the reality of it but like when it comes to what cards are good like it's, nobody is entirely accurate every time so it is really reminding me of the glide conversation like two years ago and it turned out the glide ended up being really good in a very specific deck so I, we just have to wait a year and a half, two years, and then we can complain about Curse of Agony Warlock being absolutely busted because you can somehow tutor the bloods to the top of their deck. Like you can reverse pole kill your opponent's deck and then they draw all the Curse of Agonies and then there you go. But yep. until we get to that point, deck sucks. And that would be a scary moment though. <laughs> because <laughs> because like a, a, revol a reverse cold pel poof. a reverse pole kill almost makes sense as like a <laughs> as a card that they, they could print like and card, uh, yeah, yeah. I, but like that would be fun or that would be unfun for more reasons than just putting like curses at like at your deck because that would have to be a very expensive card and so if it's a very expensive card it's coming down late game and that's just making people miserable so i hope they don't print that card for a variety of reasons <laughs> well now you know they're totally going to um let's talk about some uh, some other really bad decks um, maybe not at the fault of these brand new cards. Let's talk about some of these Priest Dragon Synergy cards. Uh, so Lightmon Netherdrake, this is kind of the new Dustbreaker. Uh, if you have a Holy and a Shadow Spell, you deal three damage to all minions. Uh, comboed with Horn of Rathion, so this is the three mana draw minion. If it's a dragon, summon two two ones with Rush. I, I played a lot of this Priest deck. It's very good against board-based decks. When you play against something that's not a board-based deck, your deck doesn't do anything. Uh, which is a really bad thing when it comes to a deck in the WoW format, right? If your deck just doesn't function against like half the decks in the format, y you've got some issues. But I will say, like stuff these these cards are powerful. They do things, right? They they are good build around pieces. 
it just like the deck itself isn't there <laughs> um I, I i haven't messed around with like reno priest yet i don't know if you guys have touched it but like nether drake itself very powerful card horn Arathion, very powerful synergy piece like i i was playing like a, a four or five dragon deck like four dust breakers plus like a kazakasan uh shell i didn't lose to pirate warriors because i didn't queue into a single one so like i queued into shamans and, and inner fire priests and druids and my deck just didn't function which kind of sucked but yeah you know. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you say the deck isn't there. I think the deck's there. The meta game's not there, and I don't, I don't know that we're going to get a meta game that's going to be friendly to this deck because I, I had the exact same experience. Like, Nether Drake overperformed. Horn of Rathium, massive overperformance in the right deck. Like that, that card was like just kind of silly. And I was running uh, four Duskbreakers, Operative, and um, uh, Kazakusan because I like Operative because he's fun. Uh, so like. You know, as long as you're consistently like hitting a dragon off of the horn, like it's nuts. I had the exact same problem. I was queuing in the um, the diamond five to to one band, and for thirty games, I did not see a single pirate warrior while playing this deck. And I was just like, this was my break between Curse of Agony decks, and I was losing my mind again <laughs> because I was just like, where are the pirate warriors? I queue into them all day when I'm not looking for them. And so this is this is why release day was such a nightmare for me because I was just like, okay, I'll just keep playing until I hit a pirate warrior, and it never happened. So, um, <laughs> so I yeah, I imagine this deck is phenomenal into pirate warrior because I did queue into like, you know, errant murloc shamans and that type of thing. Um, anything that does play for board, it's just like GG. I like I, I have infinite uh, uh, infinite dust breakers. It felt like I I was impressed by how easily Light Maw Nether Drake seemed to be um to get online just because you know when it's in here your hand so you can kind of prepare for that and not dump the spells you can also choose what you need off of something like a palm reading if you have if you're lacking a holy spell for instance and you have another shadow spell you know what you, you need to lean towards you you have shadow visions you have thrive in the shadows you have renew potentially so like there are a lot of ways to generate spells to make sure to clean up your hand to make sure it's online and then on top of that like often you're paying three mana for it because you have the uh the the dragon study so yeah i think the deck's like there it's good at what it's meant to do it's just like there's nothing that it can queue into that it would be good against other than like you know you've, you get lucky enough to find an even hunter or the 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 pirate warriors come back out of hiding yeah it's i mean it's the same reason why like brain of Priest is bad right like the it just doesn't make any sense in the current meta game and it doesn't uh, you know, it does, doesn't kill people fast enough and doesn't have a combo win condition of its own and just being good to aggro isn't enough. Otherwise, hey, Odd Warrior would have been the nuts for the past, like, two years, but it's not really how it works. Um, but yeah, I, I still stand by my feelings that, like, I I, I said last show that I didn't think Lightmore Nether Drake was going to make it out of its, you know, time and standard untouched, and I still feel that way. Like, I think that card is really nutty. It just it doesn't make sense in any decks right now in wild and hell it doesn't really make any sense in decks in standard um <laughs> at least right now but it is there it is like an absurd uh tool for the deck to fall back on the the horn of rathian though uh like you're saying it's better than i expected like it does seem very very good so that one did catch me a little bit off guard in the um like dragon specific decks all right and, and to wrap up uh new card segment Rafa wanted to touch on uh one one of his favorites here. So Ruffle, I'll, I'll just let you take it away with the section. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a uh, I had a seventy percent win rate with uh, with big spell mage. So the deck is clearly busted. That was despite uh, missing a pretty obvious lethal in my very first game. So I could have had a much better win rate with it. Um, but like, okay, the the deck's not good. I just I just high rolled out of my mind. But like. Honestly, Drakefire Amulet did kind of overperform in the deck. I, I think one thing I, I worth clearing up, which uh, our YouTube comments were very uh, kind to uh, tell us of, is that like it doesn't actually add the dragons to your hand because it has um, slightly different wording some, than some of the cards that we referenced uh, in the past. But like, despite that, it doesn't really need to. Um, if you're good at the game and draw your sandwich in Big Spell Mage early on, um, it just gives you like 20 mana worth of stuff for five mana and that's uh pretty good like there are it, it it's harder than i thought to low roll the uh the dragons on this and um even getting something like a 
like the the new flame waker dragon actually ends up being pretty good because uh you know you just need a couple spells to, to clear the board but um deck's not great but it it's definitely not a 70% win rate deck, but it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, you get to you get to use new cards. It's it's important that it's a fire spell because uh, it comes back with your uh, Magister Dawngrasp as well. And, um, I don't know. Honestly, the, the deck actually seemed, like, cohesive enough to, act, you know, be a playable deck at, uh, I think I was in the low diamond and uh, obviously climbing with it um, at the time. So, like, give it a shot. Have some fun. Uh, just don't blame me if you lose too many games in a row to Pirate Warrior. Uh, I, I was beating Pirate Warrior. What's your problem? I We will get you uh, the per, the personal email here for Raffle, his, his business email. If you guys have complaints about the deck, you craft cards, do not get appropriate return on your investment, send your complaints that way. Don't. Yeah, and... I will send uh, those emails directly to my spam folder. So, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Uh, any any other kind of new things that are popping out to you guys about the mini set, and if not, just how you guys feeling about it so far? Yeah, I think this is one of the few times where the whole like the mini set, the expansion will do nothing. Crowd is, I don't want to say correct, but it leans a little bit more that way, right? Like the the set has been impactful in terms of the quest hunter and the Kazaka sand stuff. Um, but it is the, it is definitely one of the lower impact uh, mini sets or expansions that we've seen in Wild. At least it feels that way um, right now. That said, um, you know I think there is some future tools kind of thing. Um, even if the impact isn't right now, like I re I'm re genuinely really high on pet collector in that big beast hunter someday. Like I do think that that level of mana cheat and redundancy with something like Witchwood Grizzly can actually be the backbone of something very strong. We've talked about the uh, Nether Drake potentially being very good down the road um and so i do or even like bracing cold right like bracing cold might still be a very powerful card and things like big shaman even if people aren't that interested in big shaman <laughs> so it's definitely a lower impact set but i mean i think quest hunter by itself is going to be enough of a big deal where things are definitely going to feel you know pretty distinct from where we were before i'm i'm of a different mind completely i think that that crowd is 100 percent wrong as they usually are in that regard i think this is just like what we should expect from a mini set i think that the reality is we've had mini sets that are arguably like a little bit too disruptive um <laughs> in, in in what they have done like do we do we want another dark moon raises do we want another like skullman's level set like i yeah I'm done. Uh, I don't know. Like <laughs> those are those are the cards that people are complaining about. Like people Give are losing their writer. minds. People are losing their minds over Kazakhstan, and it's not even that strong of a card in our format. Like, like what do these people want? Like going into a set, um, it like there's so much negativity around. Oh, this is you know not going to impact our format at, at all. This is. This is such a weak power level. And then the set releases and the cards are playable. And like, oh my god, it's broken. How could they print these cards? Like what do you want what do you want like a a mini set in wild should have like five to six playable cards right because the the card pool is so deep um in in the format that like what what more can you expect i think that that's a pretty reasonable expectation i was watching the the masters tour and this weekend and you know it's a, maybe more new cards are being played in wild right now than than in standard like the, they're not it, it hasn't been super disruptive there but it's I, I'd say maybe uh, a, about the same number of cards are are, are popping up, different cards uh, for for sure, but like about the same number of cards, and like so, I, I don't know. I, I feel like people's expectations are maybe a little bit um, misplaced because of how powerful some of the mini sets have been. But then, like, I don't understand the compl like. I feel like. Yes, it's obviously not the same exact people arguing those same two points, but it seems like there's there is some amount of overlap where like people just kind of complain no matter what. Like they complain preemptively because it's going to be bad, and then things are played, and they complain about those things being played. So I don't I don't know how you win. Yeah, I mean, I I just want to clarify. Like, uh, I don't think the impact of this set is bad. You know, like. Like you said, if five or six or seven cards see play out of 35, like that's a really good ratio for, for a wild format, right? Like that, that's pretty good, actually. Um, especially when they can't often throw in a whole bunch of additional huge archetype support because only, you know, a few cards for each class. Um, 
but like you're saying, uh, I, I do think that even if this should be the expectation, it is probably a bit of a lower impact than something like Dark Moon Races, which was probably a little bit silly. <laughs> um, and, you know, has a, a bit of a too much of an effect. Uh, so in that sense, I think I think it's a it's a, among the mini sets is a lower impact, but obviously you know has been felt. And as for the complaining, I mean, you know people are always going to complain <laughs> about everything. Like people are always going to moan and and no one's going to be happy for any reason. But you know that that's the way it is. Yeah. Well, I'll say one last thing to answer Mio's broader question. Um, I'm actually enjoying the meta game a lot more after the the mini set. Um, I think that, yeah, we talk about maybe Questline Hunter being a bit of a problem, but I think it's actually, this is something that I meant to talk about when we were discussing the deck as a whole, but like, I think it's kind of, uh, being a little bit disruptive for the decks that, uh, were maybe reigning prior to it. Like it's pretty good into free shaman, which people were concerned about as long as you dodge the Lothab and don't do something stupid into dirty rats. And, um, it's like, it, it it's got to be great into Mechathun Warlock and Combo Warlocks in general. Like, it's decent into Pirate Warrior. Maybe not as good as the odd version was because, like, that three is a an important break point. But, like, you know, it, and then it has some obvious weaknesses in that it probably just gets, you know, trounced by uh, Combo Burn or Hyper Aggro. So, like... I don't know. I like I've and maybe this is just because I wasn't actually queuing into Pirate Warriors and I did I am on the back of like a good uh general run with a quite a few decks towards the back half of the week, but like I don't know. Metagame feels a little bit better to me just because like I think a toned down version of Hunter into those decks in particular, uh, the free shaman and the Mechathun Warlock was something that maybe we needed. Yeah. I, I think just like broadly, I was enjoying the metagame prior to the mini set. I think we, we talked last week about how it was personally my most enjoyable metagame since like post mini set in Fortune of the Barons. Wide diversity of popular, powerful decks. And I think the mini sets just increased that diversity, right? We're, we've talked ad nauseum about Questline Hunter, but just like also the diversity of slow druid decks. It's no longer just like the same two decks. It's a bunch of different types of slow controlling druid decks which is cool right i i've harped on this before diversity is sweet and especially when it's diversity of powerful decks at the top of the metagame so i i, I think the mini set's done its job i think it's been super sweet and i uh, i'm really enjoying wild i uh, the little time that i get to play it i don't really get to play it too much right now because of work but format's been sweet and really really been enjoying it yeah i think that um maybe that is why i've been enjoying it uh this past like back half of the week is that i have gotten a good diversity of uh, uh of opponents and so maybe escaping the uh the, the diamond vibe band is just what i need to do more frequently to get away from the the pirate warriors that uh kind of spin me up a little bit so I, I think that like i've mentioned on the show before like my my enjoyment of the um of the game is like directly proportional to the number of pirate warriors i queue into so like not having to do that during the back half of the week as much and you know, the few times that I did queue into them actually playing a deck that had a chance of winning, um, you know, maybe that <laughs> contributes a little bit as well. Come join us in Legend Ruffle. Come come be one of us. <laughs> Try hard Ruffle? Try hard Ruffle back? No. Come on, one one month. Never 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 again. <laughs> never no. again. Every time every every time I do like the the beginning of the month is such a miserable time for me to like play the game because anytime i'm that invested in the outcome of the game i just like i, I enjoy the game a lot less so um it, it's yeah there's never going to be the return of try hard raffle <laughs> i don't think unfortunate uh all right i think that's gonna be the end of our episode here pretty sweet one all of you guys that are listening let us know your thoughts and feels about all these new cards and decks and what you've been playing feel free to share a list all that kind of good stuff uh Raffle Corp, appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. Uh, let the people know where they can find you and your content. Yeah, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube at Raffle and Instagram and Twitter at RaffleHS. And you can find me at Corbett Games, all those plat flo uh, platforms. And thank you guys very much for watching slash listening. And you guys can find me at Get Me Out on all those platforms as well. Of course, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, just a reminder to uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoy the content. And uh, before we head out, one last little announcement here. Um, for those of you guys that are not super tuned in uh, to the Twitter community, 
uh, Blue Train, popular community figure. Uh, if you've hung out in any of our Twitch chats before, you've probably seen his name. Uh, it's holding a People's Choice Award. Uh, so basically, you guys get to vote on a bunch of sweet awards. Uh, all three of us have been nominated for a couple of things. And the podcast itself has been nominated. So I don't know if this is uh, biasing any of the votes, but you guys should all check it out. First of all, check, check it out. Participate in the, in the community awards. But also, if you guys enjoy the podcast, make sure you guys vote for that as well. That being said... <laughs> That being said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this week's podcast. Thanks for all listening all the way to the end, and we will see you guys next time. Later.